On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. Man, do we have a treat for everybody today. We got the Action Jackson himself <laughs> in studio to yes, introduce sir. everybody to my friend Patrick Jackson. Yes, sir. Hey, hello, Heath. How you doing? Good, Great. good. And, of course, Zach. Hey, hey, how's it going? Matt hiding behind the wall trying yeah. to stay. Hello, you hello. know, he don't he don't like to stay with us peasants. He's got, he a, he's got a camera quiet. in there. He's so, kind of yeah. a, you know, he's, he's too high and mighty for sure. us. Sure. <laughs> um, I've been here there. running the show for you. And you <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. I'm on sorry. Like I'm sorry, music. Matt. I'm sorry. I do. <laughs> you are the man with the controls. I mm. do. I'm sorry about that. Um, yo, but I, I, my buddy Patrick Jackson. We've known each other now for 10, 11 years or so, and yes, and uh, fellow East Texan. And uh, interesting story. You know, football uh, played in the NFL and college, and played for a national championship, and does a lot of stuff in the NFL. A lot of in you know individual businesses. He was actually in the insurance for a long time. That's how we met back in the day, and. We'll go into his story, the third segment, as, as we always do on this, to let really let you get to know a little bit about Patrick. But Patrick and I have always kind of been because we, we're both really fiery people. So this right. could be a hot, you know, hot, hot, topic. Sure. hot, yeah. hot episode. A little bit of vitriol in yeah, second yeah. shot today. All right, yeah. I can get behind that. Fellow yeah. East Texans, and <laughs> except for, you know, he's all like polished. Like you, you listen to his speak is not no. like mine. No. <laughs> listen to your late. No. Like, he talks much better you than me. you got a great radio voice. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Just, yeah. just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Some red, will some of that redneck come out the, the twain? Yeah, some yeah. of it. Some no, of it. not at all. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get started with the headlines, shall okay. we? Right. First thing, uh, very recent this came up. A teen who wore traditional Chinese dress to prom sparks fury on social media. A young woman, uh, Kezia Dom, I think is how you say it, of Salt Lake City, was uh, going shopping for a prom dress, couldn't quite find the right thing. And in the uh, in a uh, vintage dress shop in, in Utah, she found this really, really ornate, beautiful Chinese dress with like a real high neckline. It's red with like gold leafing and like really cool. So she took pictures, posted online, really excited about it. And then somebody on Twitter, a guy named Jeremy Lamb, it's not not a celebrity or anything, just somebody on Twitter saw it and, and made a tweet that said uh, his culture, his Asian culture, Eastern culture, I presume, uh, is not her prom dress. Uh, he, he dressed it up a little bit more, uh, used a couple more words than, than I would like to offer on the show here, but uh, he was pretty upset about this. And then this caught fire on social media, as social media does, and suddenly people are bantering back and forth on whether or not a woman who is, for all intents and purposes, Caucasian should be wearing a dress uh, that is not of her culture. And I got to be honest, I saw this headline and thought to myself, well, I don't know what we can do. This doesn't seem like a second shot thing. And then Heath sent it to me and it was yep. like this one. I want to talk about this. So I don't know what you've got. But I'm curious to see what your uh, second so, shot is. So here's the thing: is number one, I'm, I'm not going to comment on whether or not that was um, culturally, culturally was okay or not because <clears throat> I'm not. That's not my culture, so I don't know if that's right or wrong. Right? Like, if she wore um, a white trash, you know, tank top and, and some holy jeans, and I could comment on it. That's where I'm from. That's me. So I can comment on my own. Right? Probably made in Tyler, yeah, yeah, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but I'm not going to comment on that aspect because I don't know. I, I you know, I, okay. it's not me. I, I don't. I, I can't sit there and judge that. What I'm going to talk about is dressing in general, right? Um, I think in today's world, right, they got this whole people go, well, you're supposed to be casual in who you are. You no, know, you're supposed to be dressed nice, and you know, a lot of people go, well. When you go meet with customers, you always dress one level above them. Or when you don't have it, you fake it till you make it. So you dress better. You do all those things, right? Mm -hmm. right, right. So I thought this was perfect because my man Patrick here is also a very sharp dressed guy you who both always look great. who yeah. always dresses yeah. very very yeah. sharp. I need to look into that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get you one of those dresses. Yes, yeah. it's a nice dress. Get a suit like that. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, we may be stepping all over the culture just by saying that. No. Golly. No, no, no. 
Um, but what are your thoughts around all that? Because, you know, it's, that's from when you were coming into it, you know, back in the early 90s and stuff, would you imagine businesses ever let people in with shorts and stuff? Well, I mean, so stuff has changed. So what are your thoughts around that? Right now, just what I'm thinking right now, I'm in social media, the mm-hmm. social media branding. And um, the thing that gets me is that, like you mentioned, the Jeremy person that Jeremy, came in. Yeah, let me get his name. Did the t- did Jeremy Lamb. The tweet. Did yeah. tweet. I mean, used to be growing up in East Texas, if you have a problem with someone, and I know, you know, it's, right now social media has blown this thing up to make it a global yeah, f- of course. Yeah. Yeah. Sense, but All the world's you, a stage. You direct that to that person, and you find out what they was thinking before they put it on. Absolutely. And then after you get, you know, back and forth and you get an agreement, you're okay with it. Yeah, yeah. But now one tweet can go out and millions of people get it. It goes viral. Yeah. Next thing you know, you have a whole situation which she probably didn't even – she didn't put the dress on to go into a having a situation. She thought she was doing something that was. She thought it was a pretty dress and that it was. It was actually kind of a good thing because she was representing their culture. Right. And it is a pretty right. dress. I'd right. like to make that clear for anybody who hasn't seen this. It's a nice dress. Right. Yeah. And she could have asked some uh, an Asian friend or something. Yeah. About the dress beforehand. I mean, I, just I, never. Yeah. You know. I, I don't know if I would have ever even thought to ask or not. I, I guess I would have thought you know that wasn't disrespectful, but that's right. not. So I don't know. Right. Um. You know, it, it's funny when I started um, in the in the business. I've always had a baby face. I've always looked really young. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, before, right when I started selling, I got three seventy nine dollar suits online. Mm. Yeah. And and got them ordered. You know, and you had to go tailored because obviously they didn't fit at all. Right, right. Seventy nine dollars. <laughs> um, and I wore a suit and tie every day. Yeah. From from then from then on. And um, I think we're still on. Keep going. And so yeah, we had a little technical difficulty. It's okay. Okay, everybody. Um, but, you know, one of the neat things is an interesting part of it all was I I dressed like that because I felt so young mm-hmm. that as soon as I put a suit on, yeah. I automatically kind of looked older, right? right? And some people would say, well, w- when you go to somebody's house and you're selling them insurance and they live in a trailer house, you walk in a suit, that can be, um, they can seem, intimidating yeah, they or, may be intimidated right, or all this and right. that, right? And, you know, some people say the rule of dress one level above kind of the clients you work with, right. but some say you you kind of you know put it off i've always believed that number one is you got to dress whatever makes you feel great Mm -hmm. whatever that is because i'm a firm believer that when you look at yourself in the mirror you go man i look good yes i feel confident yes then you're that way and so the other thing that i've always done is i've always said this i go look and put on jeans and a polo okay Mm -hmm. and you're going out making because in our world you know going sales calls i'm I could be running four or five different businesses in one day. I don't know what it's going to be, right? right? If I'm in jeans and a polo and we show up to a downtown Dallas law firm, I can't slap on something to be more fit their kind of way. Profile, right? culture. Right. Um, but if I wear a suit and tie every day mm-hmm. and I show up to a construction site, I can take the jacket off, the tie off, roll up the sleeves, exactly. and then I'm fine, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, in a pull-up law firm, I can put it all right back on. Exactly. You can't do it the other way. You know, right. so that's where I've always kind of been. I've always been, you need to dress what makes you feel something great. Would right. you agree? Start off with, with you. I, I call it putting on my uniform. Yeah. I have my uniform, yes. I, I'd rather dress up starting off, and then I can always take off. Yeah. Take down. Yeah, you know? sure. As opposed to, like you're saying, now I'm, I'm stuck I'm at this law firm. I got on blue jeans and, you know, uh, flip-flops or sneakers or so. Yeah. But now I say, oh, I wish I had brought my suit. Yeah, tie, you know, and I'm I'm out of the game now. Yeah, because then you can't do it. Yeah, and you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm. That I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Say that oh, again. Sure. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. What What is it uh, that I was saying? That what I always loved was our Dion, our buddy Dion Sanders said. Which one? The the several. The, yeah, no, no. One of I, one <laughs> You're of talking the, about if you look good. If you looks good, if, if you, you feels, feels good. good. If you feels good. good. You play is good. If you play is good, you get paid good. good. You get paid good, good. you eat good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and wow. so and yeah. so he had this whole thing, and, I, and I've always, I always yeah. loved it because I said, look, yeah. I, you know, I'm not against – I'm not – I've never been anybody who's mandatory – had any kind of mandatory dress code for people. Right. right. Now, by second chance, the majority of the people that work with me and work for me end up dressing, you know, similar to what I do. Mm-hmm. But I don't tell them to. Right. They can do it however they want. But I'm going to tell you this. When's the last time you saw somebody in khaki shorts and a holy shirt and said, man, I want to be like them? Right, right. What, That's what, what you, you got to ask yourself is go. When's the last time you sat there and thought in these, you know, shorts all that stuff that you go whoo man i'm feeling confident yeah. you don't i mean yeah. that's the thing is that's what people don't understand the 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 way you dress yeah. and the way you come off 
it just exudes it from yourself. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like when I met you. I mean, again, like you said, you didn't. You came in with your suits, and and you know you was professional. Yeah. But you didn't, you know, force anyone to to wear suits. But you set the tone. Yep. The tone is set up from the top. Yep. And when you come in and you see this on a day to day basis, now what you want to do is get your, your guys or your team is leveling up. To yep. Be you know he's already successful doing you know selling. Yep. He's already successful at net, networking and making making new contacts. How can I be successful? And sometimes it's the visual. Yes. It's seeing it, and once you see it on a day to day basis, now you want to start. You know, let me change my wardrobe a little bit. Let me yep. get, you know, and I'm having a big issue right now with my wife. She always talk about untuck your shirts. You always have your shirts tucked in, the t-shirts <laughs> yeah. tucked. And I try, you know, I try it, and so I like this is not me. Yeah, I like to have my shirts tucked. Every once in a while, I, I put one out, but I I feel like I'm in the uniform. <laughs> and I have my shirts tucked. That's yeah. called you getting old, Patrick. <laughs> mm. I feel like it all a long time. You know, but I always say too, it doesn't have to be a suit and tie. Yeah, but you've got to be put together. So, for instance, you go out to East Texas. You're gonna find some guys in business that are sharp, dre- that look that look sharp and look confident. That have starched jeans, their cowboy boots, mm-hmm. a tucked in starched mm-hmm. sure. button up shirt. Yeah. Sure. That is sharp looking. Yeah. Smelling that is good. Smelling absolutely. Good. Yes, you know, what I mean? I, that's what I think. It's more so. It's just everything put together. Even if I'm gonna work from my home office for a day, I still get up and get dressed. Right. Because if I sit there and I'm not like I don't feel as confident. I don't feel as uh, like with I'm it. getting things yeah. done. I'm yeah. productive. Yeah. Sure. Like I've, I've heard it said before, this is Texas. Even the billionaires wear jeans. And yes. I appreciate that. Yes. But they wear sharp jeans. Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah. <laughs> They're stark. <laughs> They're not wearing, yeah, holy yeah. ratty jeans. There's right. a difference. But that, and that's what I always say is it doesn't take money to look good. So people go, well, I got to make money first. I had $79 yeah. suits, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And I wore those three suits for four or five years exactly. over and over and over exactly. and then you know it's kind of like the same thing with a car you ain't got to have a nice car to keep the dang thing clean exactly. you know what i mean exactly. like yeah. like that's the thing is it's just because you ain't got a nice car don't mean it gotta be nasty right. Mm-hmm. Right. you know right. I, I believe that the way you dress the way you present yourself with your car with your dress with anything puts off who you are mm-hmm. right. Right. do you want to get up in the morning and you want to feel sloppy all day or do you want to feel put together and and look that's what you, it may mm-hmm. just be jeans mm-hmm. and a tucked in Sure, right. but you feel put together. Put together. Yeah. Put together. So I, I would t- I would tell you to think about that when you dress. I've never had people that said I'm not doing business with you because you look too professional. Right. Right. Okay, never right. once. Okay. Never once. Yeah, I've had people that, that I know people that didn't get business because they come and look like a slob. Right. Sure, and it may, gave them the wrong impression. Off the top. You know what I mean? I would rather somebody's impression of me be too professional right. than slob. Right. So take that home with you. Think about that. I mean, I, I'm I'm a fan of. You dress how you feel, and when you dress up and do any of that, you feel better about yourself, and your confidence will exude out across anything else. So right. maybe put that in context. I'm not saying you got to go get, out and get the expensive suits like Patrick and I and oh all that have. Wait a minute. Wait I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm saying just put yourself together a little bit, all right? Yeah. We got a pretty fire we one coming up next on the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Heath Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today ready aim fire second shot is back for another round on rncn as we say in east texas if this next segment doesn't light your fire your wood's wet Uh (laughs) wood's wet you know what i mean your wood your wood is going to be extremely wet because i'm going to tell you I was, I was, when I saw this story okay. and, and that outcome of it, boy, it just fired me up like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Like I was, I was so excited. Um, 
I was so excited for him. You know, I was just I, I loved it. I thought it was a great one. I thought you know, and with Patrick coming in, I was like, man, this is kind of. Well, right up our alley. Well, and, I'm and like the crowd. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm ready to get to it. Yeah, let's, yeah. Do, I mean, let's, let's get this wood uh, dry so we can light this fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's uh, this is a tough headline. Um, right. You know, we get tough headlines every once in a while. This one has a happy ending, though, so that's yeah. important. Okay. Miracle Boy wakes after parents sign organ donation papers in days of being brain dead. Uh, Trenton McKinley defied all odds last month when after a... I, I, a dune buggy accident specifically uh the 13 year old boy was uh knocked unconscious um he was re- clinically dead for about 15 minutes uh he was in a hospital laid up the doctor said listen guys telling his parents of course it's not going to work out even if somehow he does manage to come back he's in a coma he's not going anywhere mm-hmm. he's on life support you're gonna have to you're gonna have to Pull punch out here. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Wow. You know, you need to make you need to make the hard choice. Um, and so they decided. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it. And then right before they, they found, well, they found three. There was three other kids that were actually sitting there that matched his deal five. for five for his five organs. other kids. Yeah, and and um, they signed the paperwork and all. And we're gonna pull the plug uh, the next day. Right. And wow. uh, when they were deciding they were gonna do it, right before they gave him the final brainwave test before they signed everything out, uh, his hand moved. And they looked at his eyes, and suddenly his eyes weren't all washed out in black. They were bright blue, and he was he was back. He made it. Come all And not only that, but, you know, he's not a vegetable. He's walking, talking. Yeah, he's everything. Photo of him. Full, he's full yeah, recovery. Yeah, yeah. I heard him in a little recovery. interview with him. He's full recovery. Like, that, that's amazing. me. When I saw that, when you take talk about the definition of triumph mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. overcoming and overcoming odds and... And just victory in general and being a um, – doing it against what others would say and just empowering through no matter what that is to your story and what your story – what that story is doing. I mean, when I saw it, I just thought about, man, don't give up. Yeah. Like I thought yeah. that I, – I immediately went to – that's why you never give up because you yeah. just yeah. don't – you know, number one is, is, is that, you know um, – God can do anything. I mean, that's just my personal faith belief is, is yeah, that, and that, right and that, and that, you know, that, that was, um, you know, that just doesn't happen. Yeah. And, and there's something in store for that young, that young well, man. Well, what I see also is just, just imagine the parents getting to the point to, getting to that point to sign off. Yeah. You know, sign the organ donation papers. Yeah. What they had to endure or what they was enduring leading up to that time. Yep. I remember my for my and that's personal for me in a sense because my twelve year old daughter now she was a a preemie born three months early yeah and I remember at one hospital I'm not gonna say the name one hospital said you know you guys may want to talk and basically was saying talk about terminating let, let, terminating the child and so we're like oh no just yeah, yeah. we're gonna get, we're gonna go after this thing yeah you know? went to the, to the, our main hospital and my wife of course you know delivered the baby but wow just every day you know. It's tedious, you know, because every day you're looking at, is this going to be the day? Yeah. We was like, we looking at the, at the, you know, the her, my baby, and she's living. So long as she's she's still alive and opening her eyes or moving or whatever, we still giving her an important life to her, talking to her in the whole nine. And I and and we went to that that step, and I can just imagine with this the miracle baby, as far as they signing or, organ donation papers, they was at the point of. This is it. This is almost final. You know, when you hear stories like this one, and, and you're talking about with your daughter, too, and all of these stories of people that overcome things and all that, what blows my mind is that people still give up today. Right. You know, like, it's like even all of these long shot, long odds yeah. of people making it, um, whether it's somebody that's been told, you're too dumb, you're, you're yeah. never going to do anything, right? Yeah. It's a not a good chance for you to make it successful, mm-hmm. or... Um, you're not going to walk again. You know, if you're sitting there, you're not going to walk in, or mm-hmm. you're sitting there and you've de- you got dealt with this disease that they're saying it's about there. Bull. Yeah, yeah. There's look, always a shot as long as you're breathing, baby. Look for that one that one sign. That one. one. Everyone is talking about the 99 signs that's not happening. But you look for that one sign, and I think it was a, a movement a or something. A hand. A hand. A finger just moved. Just, yeah. it, just maybe a centimeter or something. Yeah. And then when you saw that, uh, you know, boom! It's, just, it's game on it's, now. It's time to go. It's time. To and go. that's the thing is, if you're sitting in that spot right now, where it's just like the odds have been dealt against you over and over, mm-hmm. and it's you have that disease that you've been dealt with. You have um, it, it. It looks like you can't hit those goals. It looks like you're stuck in whatever situation yeah. you're in. You're not. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. as long as you got right now, you're listening yeah. to this podcast, you got a shot, got a shot. to change that. Got a shot. No matter what, what obstacles it looks like are absolutely impossible to do. The word impossible is one of the worst words in the English language. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like the word realistic to me. Yeah. I hate the word yeah. realistic. Yeah. I hate the word of, well, let's be realistic. He's yeah. not going to, even if he comes back, he's going to be a yeah. vegetable. BS. Yeah. I know something more than you, brother. Yeah. Well, what that miracle boy, in a sense, if he could talk right now, or the quote I would use for that guy is, you mentioned the word impossible. Well, just add a little a brief um, apostrophe there. Just put, I'm possible. Yep. Instead of, this is an impossible situation. I am. I'm possible. Yep. That's it. I love it. So, I mean, for me, you know, my football career ended on a, my foot. I turned my whole foot around. Yeah. Broken ankle, Oof. the whole nine. And so I'm sitting up in, you know, rehab, you know, foot in the cast, but my small toe started moving. And I said, oh, man, it's just a matter of time. The next one's coming move, back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. But even if that toe don't move, you still got to believe it. You got to believe it. You know, I mean, no matter where you're at, no matter what, how bad the signs can look, yeah. you've got to believe yeah. you can get that. Yeah. Like, you've got to believe that if depression's killing you, right, yeah. if depression's overcoming you, you have to believe you can control your mind. You have to have people, yes. too, that, that's you know, yes. around you that's going to give you something. Because one of my be one of those people. Be one of those people. Well, you should be one. You should strive to be one of those people that can go put life into somebody. Can say, "No, don't pull that plug on me. I've got. I'm. I'm. I'm here for something, and it's about to get real. You know, like it's like that's my thing. Is be one of those. Like there's the best. The best thing in the world is is if you're somebody that people go when I'm around them, I feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you are you that person? You know, and and knowing your people because I know one of my best friends called me and left. This when we had voicemail, um, uh, answering service machines, and so I was playing back my uh, recorder, and I heard his message, and he he stated to me, "I feel sorry for that ankle because I know you're gonna bust rehab." Yep. And so that right there, because he knows me, any challenge I'm looking for a challenge. And that that statement, I feel sorry for your ankle because I know you're gonna just bust through rehab. That's just something small, and that's that's, that's all you need to. It's like I say, game on. Game yeah, I, on. I, 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 and that's you know that's the interesting thing I believe is that I think a lot of people deal with um, depression and they deal with all mm-hmm. those things and they don't. I, I believe depression is a clinic, you know, clinically medical, you know, issue, right? Um, but but what I want to tell you is that you have the ability. Right. You can. Like, right. I always go, look, you know, Zig Ziglar always says it. He goes, uh, somebody goes, well, you know, Zig, you're just always so positive. How can you be, <laughs> you know, that's just, uh, you know, positive thinking can't do everything. You know, no, positive thinking can't do everything, but mm-hmm. it can do everything better than stinking thinking. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. He's exactly. like, look, uh, if you drop dead of a heart attack, um, I can positively believe I can give you open heart surgery, but it ain't going to happen. Right. I, I, right. You know, be real, but right. understand something. I've got. I, I believe that I gotta at least believe that the best is coming because if you don't, what else are you doing? You're sitting there wallowing in it. Right. I said wallowing. I said it right. Wallowing. So you, <laughs> you did it. Yes. I said it the right way. Is that a hand it. Clap? Yeah, because right. I would say waller, right? Like yes. as we do in East, East Texas. Texas. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. yeah. So I got a lot of heathisms, obviously. <laughs> right, right. Um, you have to remember, you which know, you know them. Now. Yeah, you, know you, you, you know them. You, yeah. you could speak my language, right. but you know, I mean, I, I think that there's. I believe that there's two. There's not enough people. Mm-hmm. That are looking to be those courageous voices for others. Like, right. like too many people are walking around saying "What's for me?" versus going, "What? Why don't I? Why don't I try to shoot out to go? I want to be. I want to. I want to just fuel somebody with inspiration today. Right. I want to take somebody right. and tell them they can today. Like, right. if I think if more people said, "I want to set out to go," man. You're looking sharper. Right. You got this, dude. Right. Like, I mean, those right. little bitty things matter, don't you think? Right. Sure, it, it, it matters. And also, from the angle you're coming from, we need that. And then from the angle, I say I'm the miracle boy. Yeah, or I'm the person that's looking at a dead situation for you to remind me that you have overcome. Yes. The yes. thing, what you're going through now, is just it's a small mountain. You have overcome the expectations set for this for this young man. Now, <laughs> I mean, I tell my daughter all the time. I said, "What you giving up on this little English test?" When you were sitting in a little box, in yeah. a NICU box for three months, you know, fighting every day for for you know for your life, yep. and, and you're gonna let this little test stomp you. Yep. That's not happening. Yep. I'm not gonna let this. I'm not gonna allow it for you, my end. I love it. So you know, like you as a coach, you have a player, you steadily encouraging that player, but that player actually believe. Yep, believe because a lot of times you get caught in the weeds of. 
man, I can't believe I'm going through this. And, you know, that's when that coach is about stinking thinking. Yep. Get it out of me. And, and you got – and if you're not – if you're not – around a lot of those people you got to take a look at yourself and realize you're not being that type of person or you would be but but i just think no matter what man no matter what you're going through and what you're sitting at Mm -hmm. no matter what you want to strive for no matter who tells you you can no matter how who tells you you can't this boy was laying there literally signing the paperwork with no shot at all yeah not only did he come back but he's fully recovered not i mean the man was brain dead he was literally dead and he's all back from if that's possible right Anything that you want to do is possible. Is possible. The only thing stopping you is what's between your two ears. Exactly. And guess what? You control your mind. Yeah. People, that's what people <laughs> understand. You control what's between your ears. Change it. Think differently. Think you got. You know you have that shot. Believe in that. Become that person that believes in yourself. And I believe we go back the first time. It starts mm-hmm. with maybe. Maybe you need to be dressing a little more confident. Maybe right. you need to put yourself together a little bit more. Clean right. your car out. Right. Make it even though it ain't no good. Clean it up. Right. The more you got around you that looks better, feels better, takes better. When you're overcoming those obstacles, you're gonna mm-hmm. be able to push right through. Exactly. Them. Exactly. And then your story when you come back from all that is gonna be something that changes somebody else's life. And and um, you know I, I'm I'm I'm. Uh, um, I'm I'm clear I'm 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 clapping for you, mom and and son. Yeah. I'm I'm so yeah. so happy for you. That made my day when yeah. when I heard that story. And uh, it's just the, the I'll, what I'll, that kid's gonna do is gonna be huge. I will say briefly, like they said, you know, in these texts, we always talk about testimony, but you can't have a testimony unless you have a, go through a test. Yep. And so that's a huge test that I believe I truly believe God blessed them to, to overcome. Absolutely. And that's a testimony. Now we're gonna come back on this third segment and get to know you a little bit better, Patrick. Good. Sounds good. Thank you. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal, and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code Second Shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. Matt, I got to tell you, believe it or not, Zach has been perfect on the timer today. Uh, it's true. He oh, has, really? He I'm impressed. Time. I'm impressed. He, I know. He has been legit starting it on time every time, like stopping. I mean, everything is perfect. Zach, you're the man. It's only taken me, what, eight episodes hey, to figure out how to run a clock? I'm just trying to fuel <laughs> you with some inspiration. After, Give after you some that belief, last segment, buddy. I'm, I'm fueled, man. I'm fired up. I'm now, that to, doesn't mean you haven't blown past your time. Yeah, <laughs> but he has been but he has I been saw, doing it right. Yeah, yeah I, I made I made the choice to go past sure. the time, but yeah. it wasn't Zach's fault. Right. That was mine. Yeah. Zach was correct. That's good. Giving you props, Zach. Thank, <laughs> thanks for the slide about the time. Listen, no if problem. anybody's going to decide how long second shot runs, it's Heath Oaks. <laughs> sure, right? yeah. Nobody, nobody's going to tell him how it's long. His show. I'm not. Yeah. 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 It, it's there though. I I I I got it. It's conscious. But, yeah. but it's I can't blame it on Zach this time. Last time I could. <laughs> Patrick, let's tell them a little bit about you, man. They, they, they. I mean, I, I've always enjoyed Patrick. First time we met, Patrick and I just connected. Exactly. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. when we first met, I was like 20, 21. I mean, I looked maybe fifteen. Yeah, I was seventeen, eighteen. <laughs> exactly. Hey, what is this kid lost? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's running this office and he has a team, sales team, and it was like. Uh, go for the no. Yeah, go, go, no. go for the no. Go for the no. That's a good book. It's a good book. Oh, who it's called that? Go for the No. Um, Not to put you on the spot here. Man, it's like I, a hundred-page book, maybe. Right? Oh, really? I mean, maybe it's short. Something Kittner or something. Yeah, I think so. Go for the No. It's really cool all book. All it needs is a couple of pictures, and I'll probably read it. Brief book, but great pack. Go for the No. I'll check that out. Kind of. You got such an awesome story and such a cool story. You know all the different experiences you've been. I want to kind of tell them a little bit about yourself. Briefly, again, I'm I'm thankful to be on this. Um, this um, platform with, with Heath and Zach also. Thank you. Uh, this afternoon, but I'm um, I'm from East Texas, Tyler, Texas, and uh, John Tyler High School. I was blessed to get a scholarship. Uh, Stephen F. Austin uh, playing football, and uh, I received my degree in marketing, and uh, I 
he was on the national championship team, lost by three points, and that three points still bothers me. <laughs> oh. To this day. Uh, to this day. But we had played a team. Like, Maybe we should talk about getting over um, past <laughs> like, know, things I, holding you back right I, on the next I, one. I, I think our, our luck ran out because the team, we beat a team three or four games before that game, yeah. and we won that game by three. Which okay. we really should have lost. Yeah. But then we came back and lost by three, which we really should have won. Mm. But anyway, long story, uh, fast forward, I uh, was free agent with Atlanta Falcons. And um, but the characters on that team with uh, Deion Sanders, uh, 1990, Deion Sanders, um, Andre Rice, and uh, head coach was Jerry Glanville. Brett Favre was and, there too, uh, right? Favre, yeah, my second year, Brett yeah. Favre got drafted to, um, before he got traded to uh, Green Bay. But um, great, great uh, connections, great, great friends made. I still talk to some of those guys today. But I broke my ankle, um, left ankle, and uh, then I got back into camp again, and then I went to um, – um, broke, broke my ankle and then went to the World League. And I was getting ready to go back to Atlanta after the World League season was over, and I broke my right ankle, and that ended my career. Yeah. And so I was like, wow. Well, because I'm, I have a feeling your game was built on your speed probably. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, that was a time in college I was pumping weights and just trying to get, you know – Sure. Uh, Lou Ferrigno type style. <laughs> and one of my coaches came to me and said, uh, you'll never be a big guy. And he said, remember this, strength thrills, but speed kills. Yeah. And so that was like my last time in the weight room because I say I'm, I'm back on the Because you're not a very track. tall – you're not like the well, a receiver you think, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. of, of the Larry Fitzgerald 6'4", six, 6'5". Yeah. Six, yeah. So yeah. it's – it's and now today's the Cole Beasley's kind of all that exactly. the speed yeah. is. 5'9", 165, and we, you know, playing on the outside. You know. Yeah. Strength so, kills, but strength, strength thrills, thrills, but speed, thrills, kills. But speed kills. kills. I think that's the line they don't tell the linemen, right? Yes, no, no, like yes, yes, yeah, not it's the they're like, all right, it's we're going to talk to the fast guys on the team now. <laughs> yeah. Here's the deal, guys. If anybody's going to run it in, it's you guys. Anyway, exactly. sorry. Exactly. So, you know, I started um, after that and went to uh, back to Stephen F. Austin. I needed 13 hours and yep. got my degree. And I uh, started with New York Life. Yep. Yeah, I started in Tyler, Texas, New yep. York Life. Mm. And um, then I moved to Dallas. And like three months in, I started my own uh, agency and brokerage, just doing strictly life insurance and health insurance. Yeah, did that for uh, so what ten years, like, and then started a moving company. Yeah, and then I was pitching an idea to this company, AAA, pitching an idea to them, and the manager said, "I need need you over here in this department to run this department." So started with you know AAA, became two different uh, travel manager and, a, and an insurance sales manager. Wow, and. Um, then I just like, man, corporate America, I'm not built for corporate yeah. America. Because this is like really the first time working with a job, you know, nine to five. Yeah, just for know. somebody else, yeah. Exactly. So did that and became the number one manager in the Texas region. So I was, I was blessed to do that. And then I left that and took a couple of months off and I met Heath Oaks. Yeah. And uh, talked to him about the situation. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, you know, you're welcome to come. And I know, you know, you kind of on a short time, you mm-hmm. know, because I was up front with him, talked to him about it. Because he, he was just kind of. Doing a little bit of everything, Every, yeah. Just, just kind saying, of figuring moving out. Moving company, traveling there, yeah, yeah. You, you got a lot going yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So, and so I, you know, and Heath was. I'm still grateful for him to just understand that situation. But he, but he was more like, I know, I see who you are, and you could be a benefit to my team, to the office. Just being here just and being people here. being around you. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, and here I am, and I think I was like maybe the oldest guy in the probably in the, <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> in the office. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, but but my deal was, I always had work ethic, and so I knew that. Making calls, that was my thing. I'm not, you know, I could easily be at home making 100 calls a day. But I said, no, he has a call center at the office. I'm going to make sure I go to the call center every, I think it was Monday, Tuesday, yep. and early in the week, and just plow through my numbers, making the calls, have my little, you know, call sheet. Yeah. And really that, and some of the guys like the Knicks. Yeah, yeah. And different guys, you know, start watching me doing that, and then they took that on too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all it, it was, was infectious. Just, I mean, it was. It was. Really I mean, Patrick is Patrick's whole demeanor about him and because he didn't have to come up there and do anything i mean when right. we first met i mean he right. was somebody that had all this stuff going on he was wanting just really kind of a in the entrance world kind of a broker deal where yeah. getting a contract where he got some stuff connections introduce some write the business get paid on it oh sure so most of right. them really don't come around but like patrick wanted to which i, I loved because patrick had such an infectious personality and a positive so when he was in there, everybody lifted up. And everybody self, did more. And self-discipline, too. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I could have made those calls from home. I still came in. I yeah. dig that. Yeah. Exactly. That's good stuff. Yeah. And that's part of it. You know, say work ethic, but also being coachable. Yeah. yeah. Because I learned, you know, earlier, even though I was, the, like, pretty much the seasoned yeah. guy in the office, <laughs> I still respected. I was, only, I was, I was maybe 21. Yeah, mm. probably, I guess. Yeah, I was probably 21. Yeah. I respected authority. I, I respected guys in those positions. Sure. The coach. Yeah, but you that. wouldn't have if I was an asshole. <laughs> Let's be honest. You got the bleep on that, man? I got it. If I was an arrogant 
egotistical person, first you'd have never come up there and right. made the calls because right. you you would have because you would have respected it enough that you wouldn't have come up there to put yourself in a situation right. to pop off. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Right. Exactly. And, and exactly. I think that's what the key to men to to to, to because I used it as yeah I I I've been I was bending Patrick's ear as much as I could uh-huh. trying to learn as much as I could. I had I'm a lot sure. to learn. So yeah. instead of being somebody that thought I was king of everything because it was right. you know i was paying the bills there and all that that yeah. I, I, I didn't have anything to learn and i think and by doing that it helped our office because patrick was there and lifted everything up yeah mm. thank you thank you it, it was a great time it was a great time during that time it was 2008 yeah. 2008 yep. 2009 and so um did that and hit my hit my bonuses too yeah yeah uh, tier three yeah tier one tier three those bonuses yep. great times but um also but after that i Knew I wanted to go into something as far as with the new wave of being an online marketer. Yeah. And so started I am Action Jackson dot com. My, my nickname. <laughs> really? Yeah. My, oh wow. Yeah, that was his nickname, yeah. Action Jackson yeah. in, in football and stuff. That's why yeah. that's why I said yeah. action whenever yeah. I started it off. Yeah, Coach Beasley, seventh grade, gave me the nickname Patrick Action Jackson. So right now, even on some of the products I have I've written a book, uh, and the book is uh Pearls of wisdom, practical action tips. I always try to use the action word in action. Some, all I the like that. Yeah, yeah. And the company is Action Online Marketing, and the blog is IamActionJackson.com. That's still, you still running that. I am still Action Jackson. Yep. I that. love it. I was gonna say I hope you didn't still get running. that up. It's no, good. Still yeah. running. And but I always credit my uh, again go back to coaches. My seventh grade coach. I always try to give him uh, his flowers. He's still alive. But I always let him know that you you imparted something in me that I'm still using to this day. Uh, coach Beasley. Coach Beasley. Coach yes. Beasley. Yes. I like that. Isn't it how important that that is to remember that in your everyday walk as people that you have an ability to maybe have one little saying or have one little deal to make an impact on somebody forever. Exactly. Isn't that exactly. amazing? Big, big. Yeah. So like you mentioned in the previous segment about being that person to encourage someone. Yep. You know, because you never know what someone's going through. Yep. And so I always take that. And that was a time when, you know, when I was playing, actually playing the game pro, fo- pro football, that was a time when it was partying all the time and just getting away from my – my morals in the system. My yeah, parents, yeah, yeah, parents, yeah. Parents, you know, the upbringing. Which and is important to make sure everybody understands that yeah. you, not all of us are perfect all the time. Right. right. That, this right. thing, because right. if you mess up something, you can come back from yeah. it. Sure. And that was a time I used to say, I don't want to be called action because I'm just, I have really dishonored the name. I'm just out here doing everything, hanging out, spending Felt money. like you were a fraud. Yeah, yeah. I just, I was like, man. And so people will say, Patrick Action Jackson. And I was like, uh I kind of frowned on it. In 2009, when the guy, one of my fraternity brothers, he was a, a website creator, and he was coming up with the names, domain names and everything. I said, what, what, what are we going to call it? He said, Action, you, Action Jackson. I am Action. That's who you are. And at that point, I said, you know what? Once I get it back, I'm going to start calling myself this Action, you know, um, pseudo name or whatever. I said, I got to do it. By, I got to do it right. Yeah, I do it right. So, sure. Uh, and so yeah. on your blog, what are they? What can they find? What are they going to find on that? Uh, just a lot of just um, motivational um, uh, quotes, motivational talks, videos. Yeah. Uh, also, sales online sales systems that I, I do and I recommend to other people starting an online business. I uh, want to work from home. Um, also, books. I'm a big uh, book reader, and so different books that you can, you know, go through Amazon or different yeah. Barnes and Nobles and, and purchase some books. What yeah. what what would you you know Matt Zach y'all have any questions for Patrick or, and kind of what he's done have y'all had anything you you wanted to kind of come up with or comment on No uh, the only thing that really stood out to me um, well I mean there's a lot that stood out to me but the thing I really wanted to ask about um, and this isn't really a question it's more of an observation mm-hmm. you 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 said you all, you always pay respect right you, you kiss the ring of your seventh grade coach right football coach Mr. <laughs> Mr. Beasley Coach Beasley yeah, Coach Beasley. I, I, I did football in seventh grade. Did you? And I never played again <laughs> because I had a terrible experience. I just yeah. thought it was funny how, how you have come so far and you've done so much. You look back on seventh grade football and you're like, that was it. And when that was that the coach ending changed for it you. For me. Right. And I don't know if I just didn't want it enough or maybe I just didn't have the right experience, but like I, I can get behind that because in a way I can relate to it. Even though right. it didn't, I, I didn't feel the same way, I'm like, man, that's really rad. Right. And right. that you're still willing to look back and go, I, I'll never forget where I came from. Exactly. I, I can get behind that. But how powerful is that that it can that, – that's what I think everybody's going to understand is that every little word they have and their actions have an impact can have an impact in such a positive and in such a negative way. opposite way. Exactly. You sure. know? exactly. And it's um, – also it's um, – you know, for me, because growing up there, all my friends, you know, was in, involved in sports, too. Yeah. And so, for me, I was, like, the fastest kid on the block. 
and but I was always the smallest. And so I, you know, that one little thing, action, and then my other coach, it was a kid that was same grade but a couple of years older. Yeah. He's entertained, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, man. That's East Texas right there, man, baby. Uh, <laughs> this, guy, this guy beat me like just almost a half a length of a field. Yeah. In running and track. Yeah. And I like, Coach, will I ever beat him running? And he said, one day you'll get it. Just keep working. Yeah. And this is eight, this is seventh, going in eighth grade. Just keep working. And that was just like adding, you know, gas to a, you know, fire to those logs. You're talking about yeah. lighting a fire and Wet wood, yeah. Oh man. And, and so I got him in tenth grade. I have a journal at home in my mom's house. That's awesome. That I went and sucked him up, beat him up. You you know, know. I think and that's like the perfect thing to say as we go out on this episode is um one day you will. You know, like if there's anything yeah. for people yeah, to leave yeah. from this is yeah. thinking know that, you know, uh, as long as you keep working, yeah. one day you're going to get it. So all the yeah. people that are listening on anything you're trying to get, as long as you keep working, I can promise you you're going to be better off no matter what there is as long as yeah. you keep striving for that. You know. I want to make one point, too, mm-hmm. with that. Just one point. Is sure. that I was in the NFL for basically a year and a half. And, of course, they say NFL stands for not for long. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, now I look back, and it, it would be a year and a half this August. I've been a NFL youth ambassador. Yeah. And – I take more pride now because I'm saying almost 30 years later, I'm back in the NFL. Yeah. I'm being, I'm a consultant with the youth groups. I'm yeah. a f- uh, former player, transitional coach. Yep. All these things with the NFL. And I'm like, now I got to be in the NFL longer this time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make it longer than that year and a half yeah. this time. Yeah, right? I like that. Yeah. Where, where, where can they find you at? Give them all your, your where they can find you on social media yes. and, and say yes. your blog again and all of that yes. real quick. Well, um, blog is, is IamActionJackson.com. And the um, pseudonym for Twitter, all the social media platforms is The Action Online. T H E Action Online. That's on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and all that good stuff. All that good stuff. At yes. The Action Online. Zach? I dig that. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Apple Zackintosh. That's me. Uh, <laughs> lots of hot takes over there, so tune in. Well, Pete? I got to say, thank you, Patrick, yes. for taking your time out. I mean, as soon as I asked him, he's like, yeah, man, I'll come on. I'd love to, you know, yeah, so yeah. I appreciate that a lot. And yeah. I'm hoping we're going to have you on several more times because I, I I, think you're great. And, and we're, gonna, we're definitely going to have you on the next episode as well, so everybody's got to come back and listen to that. But Ed Heath, That's folks, right. at Ignorance on Fire, you know where you can look me up. Secondshotcast at gmail.com. Thoughts, questions, anything. We'll see you next time. Love you guys. destination for premium talk radio.